We're one week into the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season, and so far it's been off to a quiet start, in the Atlantic side of things at least. In this video, I'm going to dig into why that is and if or when things will heat up and get more active. So here's a look at the Atlantic right now on satellite imagery. Obviously there's nothing happening in the Atlantic. The Atlantic is basically silent, but the Eastern Pacific is not. And there's actually two tropical systems happening right now in the Eastern Pacific. And this is actually part of a weather pattern that could make the Atlantic more active over the next couple weeks. The NHC is tracking Tropical Storm Barbara and Tropical Storm Cosme. This, this just got upgraded to a tropical storm in the latest advisory. And there's actually a disturbance behind these systems too. So definitely the Eastern Pacific is pretty active. Here's a look at the tropical storms. You have Barbara has winds of 60 miles an hour right now and it's actually rapidly intensified from an invest last night. The NHC shows that this will actually become a hurricane by tonight. And then by tomorrow around 11 a.m. or so, it, it should reach at least 80 miles an hour. Before then, after that, going into, into Monday night, going into Tuesday, it starts to weaken down. And then it actually kind of turns off to the, off to the west and then actually we have tropical storm cosme which has winds of 45 miles an hour right now it, it actually is going to intensify all the way up to 60 miles an hour tonight so these are these are some quickly intensifying storms and it could reach 70 miles an hour potentially this could actually from that it could have an opportunity to, to become a hurricane too so we could have two hurricanes in the eastern pacific at once over the next 24 to 36 hours before these two storms are actually kind of headed towards the same place actually so they'll kind of merge together and that's pretty much it with these and they're not really going to impact impact mexico or anything like that but then we actually have behind this an, another disturbance with a 50 percent chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days so that's Definitely, definitely things happening in the Eastern Pacific. Here's the Tropical Storm track guidance for Tropical Storm Barbara. Yeah, basically the track is headed, pretty much all the models take it kind of northwest and then just kind of turning off to the west out into the open Pacific away from any land areas. The intensity guidance takes this all the way up to a hurricane very quickly and then there are some that show it just being a high-end tropical storm, but a number of models do take it to hurricane intensity, which would make sense. And then in, in the next 12 to 36 hours before, then it, it just drops off from there. And after 72 hours, it might not even be a tropical storm at all anymore. So so a, a short window to intensify pretty quickly, though, with, with Barbara. And then Cosme kind of just doing the same thing, just meandering out in the middle of nowhere. And then it could also become a hurricane. As you can see, the intensity guidance for Cosme is also intensifying it pretty quickly. You have some models do you kind of keep it at a, a mid to high end tropical storm, but a couple models also show it becoming a low end hurricane. Even one taking almost category two intensity. Now, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, but it does. These both have a a good opportunity to become a hurricane. Barbara definitely is very likely to become a hurricane if if it's able to continue to organize as quickly as it has been able to over, over the past 24 hours cosme also has a good chance of becoming a hurricane too and here's here's the gfs model going into tonight you have you have barbara right here cosme right there and they're actually pretty close together but then but then as we go into tuesday they start to really weaken down and then just kind of that just kind of meander around each other and then and then kind of merge together but then notice all of this all this heavy rain in the eastern pacific going into into the middle of this week kind of later in the week this is that tropical disturbance that could actually become another system finally by around uh by around friday night on june 13th we could start seeing 
some development, especially going into Saturday, June 14th, this could actually become another system and the GFS is intensifying it pretty quickly. We'll, we'll have to see if it's able to organize that quickly, but and, and actually intensify that much. But notice there's actually an, another storm system on the Atlantic side. So kind of near the Yucatan, you have a, a hurricane basically on the GFS model on June 16th. Now the GFS has been showing like a hurricane in the Gulf, a hurricane in the Caribbean kind of thing for a while. And so far it hasn't happened, but there is, there is potential for this to eventually end up happening. And in this this run of the GFS, it's showing a 971 millibar hurricane smashing into Belize. And then uh, that goes over the Yucatan. And then what's left of that actually kind of tries to become another kind of a tropical storm. And then it kind of just falls apart and really gets absorbed into a, a potentially a frontal system or something like that by June 24th, but this this potential activity is is definitely definitely there. And here's the GEFS ensemble and it's showing this is around June 13th you have that disturbance that the NHC has with a 50% chance of of tropical formation in the next 7 days cuz this is this is in the next 5 days. So looking at June 13th, so that's in five days, this is June 14th, and then notice we're starting to actually see the ensembles showing some tropical activity in the in the Western Caribbean, and then it by June 16th it really really starts to latch onto this, and and it could head into the Gulf. This potential tropical activity could head into the Gulf. It could stay in the Northwestern Caribbean. Who knows? And then some of these some of these ensembles are showing showing by June 17th it's already hitting the, the Gulf Coast. Uh, there's These are spread out, so there's definitely a lot of uncertainty on on how this will organize and if it will at all, but, but these ensembles are showing, hinting at tropical activity as we go into the middle of June and into late June. So that's showing potential activity even June 19th, June 20th, and the storm activity, the storm potential is still there, and then the ensembles are kind of showing either the same system, maybe maybe additional activity around June 22nd, all the way to the end of the model run on June 24th. So that's that's a pretty interesting signal that there's there's the potential for something over the next couple weeks, and and it definitely lines up with the Climate Prediction Center. They have their week two. Global Tropics Hazards Outlook showing, and this this was actually issued issued last week, but still showing a moderate chance of tropical cyclone formation in the eastern Pacific, but also a low chance around around Central America, kind of also in the the southern half of the Gulf, and that also that potential also continuing into week three from June 18th to June 24th. So, and a low chance of of tropical cyclone formation in the eastern Pacific as well. So this is definitely showing that activity around this this time frame around the Central America region and really I think that's that's going to be where the the potential tropical activity is going to be focused on. Cuz here's here's also the MJO forecast, the 40-day forecast. It's showing showing like right right about now you have favorable rising air in the tropics over the Eastern Pacific, kind of Central America, even even also the Western Atlantic, but but that's not really doing much so far. But then we also have also have favorable conditions going into into late June, especially over the Central America region. But but it looks like it's more tilted towards the Eastern Pacific. This is for June thirteenth. There's they're showing more favorable conditions over the Eastern Pacific. So that's kind of an interesting thing to to see and this does change over time but but they're looking at favorable conditions over central america especially going all the way to the end of june before july then it it it's going to be neutral to potentially unfavorable but we'll have to see what happens after that but just even just in the 
the near term time frame we have this region definitely favorable for tropical activity and here's a look at the gfs again for for just the the mid-level moisture you can see that that yeah there's a lot of dry air saharan dust and and dry air across the the main development region part of the tropics and really most of the atlantic is not not that favorable looking right now and but but then notice what happens you see by mid-june we have by june 15th a lot of moisture piling up in the caribbean and this is really the central american gyre and this this tends to create this tends to be what creates early season tropical activity in the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific, but especially for the Atlantic, if anything forms, really, I think that this is going to be the main, the main thing. If, if anything's, if, if there's any tropical, if, if there's any opportunity for, for tropical systems to form, it's going to be from the Central American gyre over the, over the Caribbean or the Gulf, or maybe a storm system off the East coast that manages to become a tropical system. The, the intertropical convergence zone is 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 really suppressed pretty far to the south for now and there's a lot of dry air in place and that's that's actually typical so that actually that aligns with the typical climate climatology for june uh and july really and so for for june you have a small potential for for tropical systems a uh, kind of low end potential for tropical systems across the gulf and kind of off the east coast of the u.s then july same kind of thing potentially even more stuff off the east coast but then yeah the, the main development region and the intertropical convergence zone doesn't really get that active in the main development region it doesn't really heat up until august and september and really only august and september because then october kind of kind of tones it down and then Here's the, the CFS model showing right now, definitely a lot of from June 8th to June 15th, j definitely just dry across a lot of the tropics. And then, but you do have the Eastern Pacific, very, very favorable for <laughs> tropical storms, very active there. And then notice June 15th to June 22nd, you have more moisture across the, the Western part of the Caribbean and the, the Gulf and the Western Atlantic, even even going into the southern U.S. and the, and really the, the eastern kind of third of the U.S., seeing a lot of rain too. So, and who knows, potentially severe weather along with that. And then that continues really June twenty second to June 29th. You have a lot of a lot of moisture over the eastern Pacific, and also somewhat for the Western Caribbean and and the Gulf before we get to. Uh, June 29th to July 6th, the Eastern Pacific stops. And that's the thing. And and I've seen this on some of the forecast models. It really shows that that there's this window for, for a lot of activity in the Eastern Pacific. And so we're going to get several several tropical storms out of that, potentially a couple of hurricanes intensifying pretty quickly before this really cuts off. And the Eastern Pacific could become pretty inactive. But the Atlantic doesn't look like it's it's very active either at this point so really it's like mid to late june is the opportunity for for tropical storm development really in the in the caribbean or the gulf before things really cut off because the eastern pacific also cuts off and and it's like it starts off very active very active all the way to the end of the month before then you get this a bunch of a bunch of nothing and then going into maybe mid July, you could have activity out here, maybe in the out here, maybe in the Central Pacific. Who knows? But other than that, like not not really a bunch of stuff in, in the tropics. After pretty much, it's going to be from now to the end of June, and then it, it looks like things there there could be a break or a, a temporary stop in the in the tropical activity. We'll have to see what happens with all that, but definitely several opportunities for tropical development in the eastern pacific and potentially a, a a system trying to form in the in the western part of the atlantic around central america and then also we have we have today pretty extreme weather happening in terms of severe weather across across texas you have a moderate there's a moderate risk of severe weather for today, a, a severe weather outbreak is expected across the southern plains today, including southern Oklahoma and much of northwest and northern Texas. A few tornadoes 
destructive wind gusts of 80 to 100 miles an hour, and giant hail up to 3 to 5 inches in diameter are likely. So the SPC is thinking 80 to 100 mile an hour wind gusts and giant hail up to 3 to 5 inches across parts of Oklahoma and Texas. And there's also strong winds and perhaps a couple of tornadoes elsewhere, but this is that that moderate risk, Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Texas, Plano, Texas, uh, Garland, Texas, all these places under a moderate risk of not tornadoes, but wind. This is a significant severe wind, basically hurricane force wind gusts expected over, over Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Arlington, Texas, and Plano, Texas, and then giant hail also, also expected uh, for the same areas across northern Texas and Oklahoma. And the hail actually extends up a, a bit further north across more of Oklahoma and also into southeastern Kansas and part of Missouri and also even in southern Texas. So this, the hail thing is also going to be very significant. Here's the kind of just the simulated radar from the HRRR. They're showing definitely just really this evening those storms really blow up across Texas and then this this races eastward across northern Texas and southern Oklahoma as a very intense line of, of winds. That's that's gonna be the big thing. And yeah, so a, a a big storm that just races through Texas over overnight before it kind of pushes eastward and weakens down by Monday morning. Yeah, and the and the winds the winds are gonna be the, the extreme thing about this like you have some definitely hurricane force winds these are gusts according to the HRRR potentially 100 miles an hour just forecasted directly on the on the forecast model so that's that's pretty intense to have that happening and then even 85 mile an hour wind gusts potentially could end up hitting Dallas later tonight so definitely a a, a very dangerous dangerous wind event expected across northern Texas and then the hail is also the hail is also going to be a problem uh the h triple r forecasted hail is showing is showing areas with at least two to three inch hail but there's severe weather soundings probably indicate indicate a lot more a lot more potential for for large hail yeah this is just a, a sounding here showing very significant hail even potential tornado soundings according to the the NAM model on this sounding, but but the main thing is going to be pretty much the main thing is is supposed to be winds, but definitely definitely winds and hail and a, a couple tornadoes will also be possible. But yeah, this is definitely a very significant event. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button if you haven't already. Share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone out.